While testing out Galopa in stronger conditions than expected, he broke the starboard line of the lazy bag. So we decided to take shelter in this small bay. We know this place well. It's protected from wind and swell. So here we can fix the lazy bag. As well, it's well stocked with fish. I had told Pish that I did not have much money, so he'd have to fish for our dinner. Well, not only did he do that, he cleaned the fish and prepared them for a fresh fry. It was a most stunning moment for a brother and sister photo opportunity. And as promised, Pish also did the cooking. I had made guacamole, but um, it's not part of Cape Verdean culture. Oh well. In the morning, I prepared the bosom chair and Pesh caught his day's share of fish. I hoisted him on the mast with drill, rivets, and a rivet gun. He actually loves to go up on top of the mast. And we trust each other, so we make a good team. He was done in a few minutes, and noticed the port side needed a new rivet too. He secured it with some lines so we can fix it back in Mindelo. For now, all was good to go. Well, in the continuation of our test, we are in uh, Bahia and speak, uh, and there's a lot of wind here. Thank God there's uh, good sand, good holding, and I got a good anchor, but it's blowing like crazy, like over 35 knots. And uh, the guys and girls wanted to check out the beach and check out the people here. There's a little tiny house with a family living there. But the only way we could get there, besides swimming, is with the dinghy. And there's no way that I was gonna let these guys go rowing, and neither was Pesh, because we were gonna get blown away and end up in the friggin' middle of the canal. So the solution was to take the dinghy with the motor and I dropped them off. So the three of them are over there saying hello. And I'm going to stay here, make sure that nothing happens to Galapa. And uh, go fetch them when they're ready to come back. Listen to this wind, man. It's crazy. Check it out. Gusts came bouncing off that mountain at incredible force. And as I'm watching the effect on the water, my dinghy lifts up like a kite and wow, flips over. Outboard engine is submerged and I wrestled the dinghy back to normal. Meanwhile, Pesh is on land to fetch the oars and bench that floated away. We made it back to Mindelo and not only did we test the boat, but we were tested too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Claro, que aquele cambalhota, tragédia, coisa de best. 
Ja loopt niet te... Nee joh. <laughs> Thank you Jilson. You did a great job. Looks like Jessica's not for a swim. I had quickly rinsed the outboard with fresh water, but that will not do it. I had my work cut out for me. Earlier, I had changed a fuel filter which was filthy and cleaned out my carburetor completely. I jerry-rigged this elbow fuel line. I just can't find a part, but now that salt water got in there, I'll have to do it all over again. And look what's in there, salt. As well, there was salt water in the system. I'll tell you now, it took me five times to take apart and clean every micrometer of this carburetor before finally getting it going. It's minute work, but satisfying if you're successful. Okay, carb is rebuilt. Time to do a sea trial. Then it stalled. Could not get it started again. So I had to pull out the oars that Paige had managed to rescue from the sea and rebuild and rebuild that carb until it finally got going again. Then I was able to take my lazy bag down so I could give it to another friend named Koif so he could do some work on it. Here I'm making a mental and video reminder of how to put my reefs back on right later. Look at the zippers. Stitching have completely come undone in time and with weather. As well, my roof spray dodger needs to be restitched completely. Paige came over as promised and put the missing rivet back on. And later, I got my roof dodger and lazy bag all stitched up. All the stitching had to be redone, and as well, replacing a plastic window which was beginning to tear. Thank you, Koif. Now Galopin is feeling pretty good about himself. Thank you, Stuart, for your donation which directly paid for these repairs. One needs a functional dinghy so one can get out. And guess what? It functions, because I need it to get out. I was invited to a birthday party. Paige, we're going to Elvin's house for Elvin's birthday party. Way up in the mountain there. Paige helped him build a house. A group of friends led by Paige helped Elvin build his house up here in the hills above Bella Vista. It's a modest little house built out of flattened barrels. They dug out a hole out of the mountain, lay down a concrete foundation, put up metal walls and a roof, and finished it with a terrace offering the most majestic view of Mandela. This is the birthday boy, Alvin, a proud yet humble happy man, and his lovely wife. They also have a couple of pigs, which will be food and extra income. There is always food for everyone, as well as drinks, and music, of course. Reggae and Cape Verde pop and dance favorites. Ha, huh, I could actually see Galapan from here. How funny, that me and Alvin could see each other's houses. Alvin works as a security guard. He walks down the city near the waterfront six days a week, 
he also has to haul up water up in jerry cans. Yet he never seems to lose a smile and optimism. It's the Mendeleev's way. Work hard so you can play hard. The party went on into the evening. And then the strangest thing happened. A citywide blackout. Me and Paige made our way down with our phone flashlights and stopped here for a candle lit sliced pizza and a few grogs. Um, pizza, alguns de vela, de maneira, minha amiga, e ele é um, minha amiga, real, como te dá na marina. Gatete, minha amiga. É muito difícil. As I've often said, being a solo sailor, you're rarely alone. Unless you choose to for a long passage, but you spend more time anchored somewhere than actually sailing. And that way it's easy to meet people, which, for me, is an essential part of traveling. So here we are with Jilson, his brother-in-law, and their families. He's taking care of Simon's boat. Simon had to skip her a boat to Croatia and is spending time with family in Finland now. As well, I brought my friend Wendy, whom I had not seen for some time. So as you can see, it's Cape Verdean leisure time again. It's nice to see this beautiful boat entertaining guests. Simon, when you get back, we'll have to do this more often. In a few days, we'll take Jilson and family for a quick sail. I've been promising him to go out. He also needed to do a sea trial for the work he had done. Jilson's also a skipper and had not been out to sea for a while. And he also wants to get his wife, Claudia, into sailing. He dreams of his own boat and hopes the chartering business will return. So does Lucas and his partner, David, who are making good use of the lockdown. <laughs> Ahora te digo algo, ¿ok? Ya, escucha. Gente, yo soy fan de todo menos de gente con maldad. Ahora ser diferente es un delito en este lugar. Todos somos leyenda, pero por algo hay que empezar. Soy leyenda de Pekín, también en Hong Kong, en cualquier lugar. Tiene voces, tiene voces, ¿quién eres tú para decir lo que es? Juego como Messi, te lo hiciste este partido y ya nadie nos quita. Vamos a la disco, ah, y matamos la pista, yeah. Aquí toda mi gente, sí. Somos pura leyenda, sí.